Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that looks to answer exactly those. I'm Rebecca Felgate and I would consider this perhaps the most difficult question I have had to answer so far. Should we test on animals for scientific discovery? We are going to look at the list of positive things that come from animal testing and the balancing list of negative before we try and formulate an answer. Ok so let's start with the positive, which is where it gets very very hard for me. Almost every single medical breakthrough in the last 100 years has been as a result of animal testing. Our understanding of insulin to help diabetics directly comes from a study of dogs pancreases, finding a cure for hepatitis B, the polio vaccine, the ability to perform organ transplants, the development of pacemakers, HIV treatments, cervical cancer treatments, further cancer understanding, the list goes on and on, it all comes from animal testing. The amount of lives it has saved versus the amount of animal lives it has cost is almost incomparable. Millions if not billions of people benefit from this research and I can almost guarantee that it will at some point directly or indirectly apply to every single person watching this video. But are human lives worth more than innocent animal lives? Well many who are for animal testing raise the point that if vaccines were not tested on animals, millions of animals would have died from rabies, distemper, feline leukemia, infectious hepatitis virus, anthrax and canine parvovirus. To put it simply, it isn't just human lives the research is saving. Ok we see the results, but why animals? Why specifically do we need to test on animals? Well there are laws surrounding what we can and cannot do with human testing, and wrong or right, legally as it is, animals do not have any rights when it comes to medical testing. That sounds awful, because it is. But that's the truth of it. The main argument for using animals of course is, with human testing out of the equation, animals genetics closely match our own, making results a good indicator of how humans would be likely to react. Chimpanzees for example share 99% of human DNA and mice share 98%. Mammals have similar body functions with the same internal organs making them good test indicators. While animals may not have rights, they are protected by welfare laws when it comes to cruelty. Of course, of course the process of testing in itself is cruel, but pre and post experimentation, animals are supposed to be treated as humanely as possible. They have many special advisors checking on their welfare to make sure they are being looked after with due care and attention. A slightly more aggressive line of argument says that if it's ok to eat animals in the way that we do, if abattoirs exist and the practice of battery producing chickens is allowed, why would testing be contested? Animals living in test centres often have much better lives than the millions bred for consumption. We can choose to eat food that contains no animal products and we can survive pretty well. We do not need meat, but when it comes to cancer, it's less of a choice and more of a life and death situation when taking drugs. Do we want to live or do we allow people with disease that could in theory be cured with testing to die? As we have reached the crux of the four argument, let's have a look at what is being said in the against camp. A lot of people who would like to phase out animal testing cite a declining need for the practice. Perhaps we needed it at one point, but do we need it now? With the advance in modern technology, we now have some alternative methods for testing such as in vitro, so test tube experimentation, and embryotic stem cell research. And the good news is, these research processes are actually much cheaper than testing on animals. For example, a rat photo irritation test is said to cost 11500 US dollars, whereas the non animal equivalent costs just $1,300. So, why aren't we doing more of this? Well, the problem is that there are certain things that need to be tested using a whole body system. Another issue with animal testing is that actually results can be misleading, with many safe medicines almost shelved due to adverse animal testing results. For example, aspirin was almost not released for human consumption as it kills cats and causes brain defects in dogs dogs and monkeys. On the other hand, it is perfectly safe for humans. Again, morphine works as a stimulant to some animals, but as a depressant to humans. In other words, results are not always 
accurate from animal testing. The main argument against testing on animals is of course one of ethics. Animals cannot communicate their choices or their displeasure at what is happening to them, so it makes it easier for people to abuse them. As a 1700s philosopher Jeremy Bentham wrote, the question is not can they reason, nor can they talk, but can they suffer? And yes they do, very much so. Animal testing kills. According to Peter, 100 million animals die as a result of testing each year. Experiments include burning, physical restraint, food and water deprivation, knocking unconscious, bone breaking, forced chemical exposure, and the force feeding of drugs. Just because animals are vulnerable and cannot tell us they're hurt and we don't recognise their screams doesn't make it okay. If we were to test on humans with disabilities, there would be absolute uproar, so why do we turn a blind eye when it comes to our furry friends? I am not a scientist, perhaps for this very reason, however animal testing is a popular practice amongst budding biologists. A 2011 poll from science journal Nature found that more than 90% of biomedical scientists agree that the use of animals in research is essential. It is, of course, a heavy sigh moment. On the one hand, you have the development and cures for both animals and humans, the information from which can continue to be useful for decades, centuries, millennia to come, versus the cruel and painful deaths of hundreds of millions of innocent animals. In my heart, I have to say, I personally am very uncomfortable with the process, but as this is coming from my heart, I can't fairly give you an objective answer on whether animals should be used for science. The for and against views are so strong and so compelling on each side. There are several things that do have answers though. Animals should never be used for cosmetic testing, and all funding possible that can be thrown at non-animal testing, such as skin cell, in vitro, and voluntary safe human testing should be thrown at it. Hopefully one day animal testing can be a thing of the past, but with videos like this, it is important we educate ourselves on what is happening and why and where exactly, as ethical humans, we stand in the debate. If you would like to share your thoughts on this topic, do you think that animal testing for science should be banned, please do let me know in the comments section down below. For now, I'm Rebecca Felgate and I encourage you to stay curious, stay alert and never ever ever stop questioning.